the Fire Protection District, Thursday, December 13th. Director Branch, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> uh, we'll call the board members. All are present with the exception of Director Wisniewski, who is traveling and unable to attend by phone. Our first item will be additions, deletions, and approval of the agenda. We do have a couple items that we have to add to the agenda. Uh, the first one under meeting minutes is to review the minutes, review and approve the minutes from the November 10th special meeting. The other thing that needs to be added under resolutions. December 10th. December 10th. I'm sorry. Uh, November 10th. December 10th. December. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. December 10th. Uh, the next item under resolutions will be 2012-12-3, resolution to appropriate sums of money. That's the only additions that I have. Are there any other additions? Others, the motion to approve the agenda. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Passed. First item then under meeting minutes review and approve November 5th. Special meeting minutes. Copies of those minutes somewhere, other than you guys. Uh, we can get you a copy of your request. You typically all this stuff was posted on the website. It didn't look like the website's been updated since August or something. So you know, if it isn't posted, I've just seen have them hard copy at the meetings for. Get those turned up. Any uh, additions or? Next one, uh, the November 8th regular meeting minutes. That was a Dan Emmings name. Adjournment, there's an extra digit added. Right. <coughs> okay. Motion to accept? Yes. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Right. Next item will be the financial matters and treasures report. Alec? You have before you the financial <coughs> reports for October 2012 and November 2012. I assume Chief. Final versions of these reports? Uh, I believe so, yes. We did have some reports <coughs> this month, but these have been corrected. Right. They, uh, they 
have been. Um, there are still, you know, a few things that we did find as we were preparing the, uh, you know, the, the budget, uh, including uh, that the ambulance that it, you know, uh, it was in the audited version of 2011 because of the accrual, and it's shown instead of the 2012 year because it never made it into the 2011. So we're going to get that amended. Um, that's probably the major. Uh, major difference in the financial report that you see in that set. Even though that ambulance was purchased in, uh, was paid for in 2012, the uh, uh, approval of the purchase was in 2011, so the election was moved back to the 2011 budget. If you move back there, the liability was incurred in 2011. That's correct, yes. <coughs> uh, if you'll uh, look at the uh, finance report, uh, I asked the board to approve uh, total expenses for October 2012, $91,828. So second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Pass. Uh, if you'll then look at uh, the November 2012 uh, report. Uh, I will move then that the uh, board approve total expenses of $183,072. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, and of course, as usual, uh, we have the details attached to each of these reports in addition to a summary, sort of on page <coughs> one of the, of the more detailed reports. I did note that uh, we're still accounting for the social revenue and expenses. We worked that out in terms of how much we've actually received and what is still outstanding. The, uh, yes, the, um, the final payments came in uh, early in December. Uh, so we have uh, uh, final numbers on those. They did not make it obviously into the November financial report because they'll be, uh, uh, you know, the last payments were received. December. Uh, so, and then uh, we also have um, you know, the purchase of the used brush truck that uh, will actually be moved over into capital uh, on the <coughs> as well. I understand we uh, went up to Fern Lake in December. Yes. Are we accruing that revenue up? How are we dealing with uh, that? That will accrue in the next budget year uh, unless uh, we actually get the uh, invoice sent to the state before the end of this okay, month. So if the, if the invoice is sent before the end of the month, then, <coughs> then it will accrue to this year. Right. And that was roughly? Uh, I think that was roughly $17,000. All right. Thank you. Any questions? All right. That will take us to our resolutions. Uh, first one deals with the 2013. Okay. Uh, resolution 12-1 uh, uh, has attached to it the uh, three-line budget that um, uh, will be uh, set to the state uh, as is required under <coughs> Colorado's uh, state statutes. The narrative version that uh, uh, is also available there has the same uh, figures the same uh, columns in it, but it provides in addition an explanation of, uh, of the budget uh, for anyone interested in, uh, in reviewing that. Um, since the budget hearing last month, uh, there were some changes, uh, largely uh, due to actually getting uh, 2011 reconciled with the uh, auditor uh, numbers from the state, or from the uh, auditor. If you recall, uh, we had originally estimated that we had uh, uh, spent up about 140,000 out of reserves in 2011 because the ambulance was uh, was also credited to, the, to uh, 2011. The actual decline in revenue or in reserves for 2011 ended up being $291,431, uh, um, which was a pretty significant uh, reduction, essentially. In 2011, the district spent 35% of, of the reserves, um, and uh, 
in 2012, we're also looking at um, a reduction of about 26,375 uh, 26, or another 5% of returns. Uh, so obviously, um, given the current uh, declining revenue situation, uh, we had to be much more conservative moving ahead with the budget than, uh, than in the past. Uh, the, um, since we began the budget process also, uh, we got our follow-up numbers uh, from Jefferson County that uh, showed an additional uh, decline of $13,000 in property taxes. Um, and uh, so that had to be taken into account uh, in that, um, that budget as well. Uh, the, obviously, the other major impact uh, has been the ambulance <coughs> use. Uh, and with uh, a decline from 65% uh, collection rate to under 50% collection rate uh, due to the reduction in, um, in Medicare reimbursement as well as basically uh, non-payment of, of uh, debts. We're, we're looking at a significant decline moving ahead in our available uh, re uh, revenues. Uh, right now we have some, quite a bit of uncertainty in, uh, in the Medicare revenues moving ahead uh, because they are certainly <coughs> under uh, under uh, risk of being reduced further by the federal government due to uh, a fiscal cliff, um, either automatically or, or as a you know as a political move to uh, to cut the budget further. So we have to an anticipate that our we are going to continue to see a decline in uh, in uh, ambulance revenues. The one area again where we did see uh, at, you know improvement in this past year was reimbursement for wildfires, um, which net uh, provided a net of $121,161. If the uh, district had not uh, participated in that, then we would have uh, been at $147,000 out of reserves this year, uh, which would have placed us down uh, at the point where uh, we would in all likely have uh, run into a cash flow problem uh, before taxes not came due in April. Um, so, you know, the, basically uh, we entered um, 2011 with 541,000. Uh, we're expected to have 514, uh, 2012, thank you. Uh, we're expected to have um, 514,000 uh, at the end of this year. And uh, then in addition to that, um, we've got revenues of approximately um, 880. 2,931 from Jefferson County and $98,737 dollars from Park County. Uh, we also saw a drop in the refunds and abatements uh, going <coughs> this year as well. So all of those were taken into account, um, you know, moving ahead with this budget. And, and as, as I said, this budget as a result is very uh, conservative uh, and uh, essentially does not draw any further from reserves. In order to do that, however, uh, we're looking at you know an 11 percent decline uh, from the budget for 2012, and overall about a 28 percent decline from uh, uh, 2011. <coughs> the uh, for the most part, again, most of the uh, figures in the budget have for the proposed uh, 2013 budget have. Uh, uh, remain the same uh, with the exception of a few areas that we did uh, add additional uh, cuts uh, to the budget wherever we could. Um, again, within the governor's budget, we do uh, have uh, funding uh, allocated for uh, the possibility of a an election in the fall, if we <coughs> choose to do that. Administration um, essentially maintains the current services uh, that uh, we provided uh, in um, this past year. That again does not restore the halftime position that was cut uh, earlier in the year and has a reduction overall of uh, approximately $14,000 uh, from uh, 2012. The, uh, Emergency services budget uh, has a reduction that's much larger, but that's also partly due to moving uh, the uh, 
salaries for the uh, maintenance and training out of uh, the emergency services uh, section. Uh, and there's also uh, reductions in the cost of, uh, of uh, benefits, um, reductions in, uh, in um, uniforms, uh, basically uh, whatever we could uh, uh, cut additional uh, funds out of that. So there's essentially over a $200,000 reduction on paper, but again, some of that was moved into the other uh, section of the budget. Um, fire operations uh, remains essentially flat <coughs> next year. Um, wildfire operations, uh, similar, we're looking at essentially uh, essentially the same uh, amount of funding, uh, a little bit more moving uh, some of the supplies where they were gener uh, generally in the uh, fire operations previously are now separated out from wildland fire operations. Um, and then with both the fire operations, wildfire operations, and EMS operations, we're going to try to break out uh, our fuel <coughs> usage uh, that each of those areas uh, has rather than having that all lumped in as a maintenance item as it has been in the past. <coughs> Again, fire prevention, um, not much change from the budget hearing. Uh, again, we did uh, eliminate the fire marshal's position, eliminate a considerable amount of the activities that we were doing in that, uh, and um, you know that uh, is something that we, you know, we're not going to be able to restore and maintain uh, the um, reserves from falling any further at this time. Uh, training budget, um, you know, again, does have the wages and benefits for the training officer included in that, but other than that, uh, the training budget has been cut uh, by uh, at least 25%. Uh, maintenance budget, again, includes wages and benefits. Uh, other than that, uh, there's been a significant cuts in the amounts allocated for maintenance as well. And then the same thing with facilities. Uh, you know, the utility costs are expected to uh, be fairly similar. However, we have once again uh, cut uh, building maintenance funds uh, and basically we're not going to be engaging in any kind of projects uh, until or unless there is additional funding available. Capital projects, uh, you can see, fell from, uh, in 2011, the district spent 599000 on capital. Um, going into next year, the only funds allocated to uh, capital are the, uh, is the uh, $95,000 that's already been um, committed to the lease per farm of uh, the engine and the tender that were purchased several years ago. <coughs> And then there's a section there for the wildland fire response, which breaks out the surf uh, reimbursement and the surf expenses. Uh, while we had a, a total of $236,000 in revenues uh, this past summer, uh, we can't really count on uh, that money going into the future. Um, it's set at, uh, at $60,000 reimbursement with a $30,000 uh, net from that. That, uh, even, even at that, is, is probably a little bit of, uh, of a uh, uh, hopeful uh, number in that uh, you know, it's quite possible that you know, there won't be uh, an extensive fire season next year, which would be good, but would also mean that we would not be sending uh, personnel out to, you know, or uh, getting reimbursed for that uh, in the next year. So once again, uh, this budget, um, unlike the last two, actually uh, is relatively flat with a, a surplus of $1,790 as it's currently budgeted. And that's due to cuts of $242,000 from the budget. Uh, and um, you know that's projected that we will be able to maintain uh, the existing um, uh, reserves at uh, $516,490 if if all the numbers in the, in the budget uh, came, came together exactly on target. Um, the, uh, we've set a uh, carryover reserve of 20% uh, of the budget again to fund um, the uh, 
period from the beginning of the year until taxes uh, begin to come in so that we don't have to uh, uh, borrow money to uh, continue operations. We have the $100,000 uh, reserve that the budget has directed for emergencies and then Tabor reserves of $48,000 and $91,000 $48,091, which can only be used for uh, certain catastrophic types of emergencies. And uh, that leaves a, a grand total of $48,000 uh, uh, basically available to fund any future capital. Actually, um, the resolution is a uh, resolution adopting the budget, um, and it is a number of resolutions. So, if someone just wants to read the title and the resolution number, um, can um, uh, make that motion um, uh, based on those specifications. So, a motion to adopt resolution 2012 12 1? Um, right. Resolution to adopt the 20 Resolution to adopt the 2013 budget. Uh, so moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Motion passes. Next okay. item. The, the next uh, resolution there is the one that establishes the bill levy. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, according to uh, state statute, we are limited to a uh, bill levy of 4.915. This resolution would uh, authorize Jefferson County and Clark County uh, to uh, certify the, the levy and to collect the taxes at the 4.9 mill levy rate for the year 2013. Motion from the board on that. Second. All entertain a motion to adopt the resolution to set mill levy in resolution 2012-12-2. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Here. <coughs> Next item. Okay, the last uh, resolution here to appropriate sums of money uh, basically uh, authorizes that uh, the sum of $2,178,740 uh, be appropriated uh, for the purposes stated in the budget. Uh, and that number is the uh, sum of the uh, existing reserves going into uh, 2013 as well as the projected revenues. It's the bottom number on the first page of the three column. It's your total available funds. And the reason you appropriate all of it is if we have a catastrophic something and have to spend it all, if you've done it, you don't have to do something. Questions from the board on that? Okay, I'd entertain a motion to adopt a resolution to appropriate sums of money. Resolution 2012-12-3. So Second. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Okay, that concludes the resolution. <coughs> that will take us to the fire chief report. Uh, I don't have a lot to report uh, for this month. Uh, it's been uh, largely uh, taken up with uh, work on the budget. Um, a couple of updates. Uh, the mapping project project is still uh, on track. Uh, that we are utilizing some of the reimbursement money from uh, the uh, Lower Road Fort Fire Four. Uh, and uh, in addition, uh, we did hear back on the wildland fire uh, mitigation grant that we had requested to provide uh, funding to communities for uh, slash reduction. Unfortunately, we did not get the uh, grant as well. So uh, that, uh, on the six grants that we've applied for this year, we've uh, received one. Uh, we've heard from uh, three others that we didn't receive them, and there are two that are still pending. things that I've been working on is one with the chief and uh, straight down some of those uh, prior year 
numbers were a little bit strange and he, he was struggling a little bit, so we um, kind of tried to streamline that with him and, and he was working um, long hours on that, but he, he got it all done and I think it's a good other than the fact you had to put that in service with that bad. <coughs> Um, and then the other thing is uh, uh, there is uh, additional um, information about the uh, um, uh, unknown case between him being brought by Chief Doe and Paul Chief Doe and against uh, um, Bob Cole and Tom Cockrell and Cole. So um, I am asking for and it is on here as an executive session that discuss that with the board concerning uh, a waiver of uh, uh, attorney-client privilege information. Questions for the attorney? Uh, citizens issues. <clears throat> I got a couple questions. Uh, in reading the paper recently, there's <coughs> a um, there's been a couple statements and even reflected in the budget about uh, um, not doing business inspections. That's actually a part of a TARA statute where chief is required to do that. There are some that are required. Uh, there are others that are not required. Uh, we will be contracting with Evergreen Fire uh, to do plan reviews and to do the mandated ins inspections. Uh, the other inspections we are going to try to do if, uh, if we can. Uh, you know, we're going to try to minimize the interruptions uh, or the impacts of the reduction in uh, staffing to the public uh, to, to the degree we can. And is that something that they, uh, uh, can be done by volunteers? It is. Uh, or by the paid staff. Would review obviously training required for those personnel to do that. Well, I would say that anything that we can that we can put into to the volunteers tent that they're willing to take on is probably a good idea. Volunteers save districts like such as this, you know, billions of dollars a year in uh, in costs like that. And I think there's a lot of other staffing issues you could you could fix with volunteers. You probably have 30 people. Uh, on your staff that can drive an ambulance. And uh, that's a significant amount of uh, staffing cuts if you put volunteers as your ambulance drivers. Just something to consider. <coughs> but, uh, I think there's a long way to go in this budget before you start cutting things like business inspections. Um, the other uh, issue that I had was um, Shutting down stations if a truck breaks. We're, we've been told a lot that we have old vehicles and they're beyond their service life, and then we go and buy another old vehicle that's beyond its service life for something. $50,000, I don't know what you spent on that old vehicle that somebody else discarded, and it's not for our <coughs> district. I think that we should be buying equipment to protect our district, not go somewhere else and protect somebody else's district. And and also, I don't think we should be involved in snowmaking anywhere, anytime, ever. That's not appropriate use of our equipment. Okay. Comments are noted. I have a question. If you're cutting these services and you're cutting business inspections, and even if you outsource them, isn't it going to degrade the grade of the, of the department in general so that all of our insurance is going to go up because we have a lower grade? I know that for the past few years we've worked diligently to upgrade the, the district so that our rates on our homeowners and our building insurance is less. And is this going to downgrade us? And if it is, what is the cost impact? And is it worth the community when you're going to ask them for a mill levy increase? Uh, does that affect our ISO, that part? Uh, there is a potential for that. There's no, obviously, no uh, definitive answer to that. Uh, the district is uh, 
I basically measured or graded once every five years. So um, we're up pretty quick. I'm, uh, I'm not actually sure, uh, but... Um, we're up that in a is, year or two. That is only one factor in that. Um, I beg your pardon? That is only one factor in the, in the ISO rating. Uh, and uh, you know, they would uh, obviously look at all the factors. Earl, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, I have a question. Um, when we lived in Southern California, we would get donation requests mailed to us. Even though we, you know, we paid our property taxes because we had the property since 1970, and we would send money back, and that's you know that has nothing to do with the taxes. It was strictly donations to people. You know, we send a check back when we got it. Is there a reason why we don't still do that? I. Uh I'm not sure when the last donation letter was done by the district. <coughs> However, looking back at the last 10 years, uh, this year was uh, basically the, the district uh, received $9,000 in donations, of which over half was a donation by the Rotary Foundation. Uh, other than that, uh, the amount of donations that the district itself received is fairly uh, minimal. <coughs> we know that the membership association did uh, donation requests in the past, and I believe that's where donation money has has gone. Um, looking at the past couple of years, donations to the district itself have amounted to uh, a couple hundred dollars a year. Uh -huh. Because when you know we've been out here almost ten years now, and we've never seen a donation request. Last time I remember it was about 10 years ago. Anything else from the public? I have uh, some questions. Did you, actually... Did you fire me? Uh, you were terminated for uh, you know, not, uh, not attending. Uh, Did you send a letter because uh, termination has to go in writing here for the rules? It, Where's that in writing? Where is it? I was told that you said at an officer meeting that you accused me of writing a return to sender a wrong address or something like that and sending it back to the department. That's tampering with mail. Would you like to accuse me of that in public? I said that it was sent back as return to sender. But you didn't accuse me of writing on it. I would like to be served in writing. Okay. I can do that. All right. What was the other reasons? Uh, you you were removed from the roster for uh, failure, to, or basically for not a, uh, non participation in the department. All right. You remember when uh, your first week here we met, and uh, I offered to uh, start a CPR program at the high school and get involvement with that. Do you remember that? I don't recall that. You don't remember that? No. And you say that you're going to cut services to the community, and volunteers are willing to leave services like that and training and you're putting out there that there's no money for these things when people are willing to do it for free. Also we talked about Joe Page and I know you brought it up at officers meetings as well. You've asked that I hate him and that's not true. I have told you that he's uh, committed fraudulent reporting to the Division of Fire and I met today or I was on the phone today with the Deputy Director of the uh, CBI. I've also talked with the former director of the Division of Fire and the current director of the Division of Fire, and they're going to complete a complete investigation of 40 years at least of uh, fraudulent reporting, also in other counties. But everybody else is getting cut. The people that are breaking the law on a regular basis gets to keep their job. Why do you think that is? I, I can't uh, speak to that question. Okay. Also, um, does the uh, district pay for the, the Christmas party every year? Do they pay for the, the awards banquet? No, the district does not. No, the membership does. The membership does? Okay. On that, uh, on that same subject, I was uh, also <coughs> retaliated against and let go by uh, 
chief, and and my letter states it was for political purposes or reasons because I don't get along with the board and most of the firefighters. <coughs> Um, so, I, I think that's a violation of my civil rights, personally. Um, and along with that, I noticed something the other day in the, um, uh, the Chamber of Commerce uh, membership, the uh, Elk Creek Firefighters Association, IF Local 4710, has an office in this building somewhere. What room is it? It uh, says here that uh, the, that there's an office and that they the webs the Elkreek.org website is their website. <coughs> Maybe Stan can address that. I have absolutely no idea. It's in your directory. I'll have to check it. So I think that if we're leasing space to the to the union, that we should be get receiving compensation for that. We're not leasing space to the union. Well, then it shouldn't be listed in the community directories. That's news to me. I, perhaps you should talk to the union president, Jacob Ware, about that.